So welcome, thank you for being Django class based views are a broad topic, a very important one, and a very scary one for someone. If you look around the internet, it's full of tutorial and stack overflow and so that try to uh, help you to use Django class based views to solve very specific problems. For example, adding one so data to context to change the, to the template name. Today, I like to try something different. I would like to, to, to try and help you understand what class based views are and exactly how they work so that later you might solve your own problems. Um, as I said, it's a very broad topic, so in 40 minutes I'm just going to scratch the surface. So this talk, uh, the target of this talk are novices. So I'm afraid that uh, experts will hear things that they already know. What are Django class based views? A uh, very simple question, a very simple answer. Django class based views are Django views based on Python classes. Very simple, but most of the time this sentence becomes another sentence in mind. Gender stuff based on Python magic. Uh, this is my feeling when sometimes when I, I, I read overflow <coughs> questions and answers sometimes. Um, the problem is most of the time we do not understand exactly what views are and what Python classes are, so we, we do not understand how to match. What are views? Um, Django is a very broad framework, a very rich framework. For the scope of this talk, Django is just a processor of HTTP requests. HTTP requests comes from the browser, from another server. Uh, Django does its stuff, its work, that base, uh, sorry, and so on, and returns an HTTP response. This is what Django does for me now. And a view is the part of Django that takes care of a very specific request, uh, which means uh, URL you're browsing, uh, you're asking for, uh, with an HTTP method. As any processing system, a view can be monolithic. This is what happens most of the time, not always, with functional based views. They are monolithic. And the problem with monolithic systems everywhere in computer science is that they are really hard to, to enhance, to change, to be adapted to new situations. You have to replace the world. You have to duplicate code. And I hope you know that duplicated code is an analysis for every, for our development. Uh, so, what you can do with a monolithic system is to split it in several components, in several steps, to allow you, or your code, your colleagues, uh, the ones here using your code, to replace just the step, the, the component they want to replace, they want to enhance. And object-oriented began in, uh, some years ago as a way to build componentized systems, to build systems that are easy to be changed. Um, just a disclaimer, I'm not here to say that you cannot do this function. Uh, now functional languages are on the So you can, you can build Componentized system both ways, but object oriented is a good way to build them. So, an example I want to try and go to a um, class based view to show you one, uh, to, to show how it's work. Uh, this is a very, a very um, easy class based view. It's uh, I just import one modern article. I'm trying to show the list of 
all articles in my database. And I am routing the article's URL with this line. This routes the browser, the, the, the address, and this defines the class base view, article list view, as a copy, as, you know, as a child, of a list view. With two lines of code, you get something that processes an incoming GET request that loads all article objects from your database and that renders a template called um, article list.html with a special variable in it. Uh, I'm interested to show you what happens behind the scene, behind those two simple lines. Advertising. Use the source. Uh, source code is there. Please you get used to read the source code. Uh, Jeff Atwood wrote a very interesting article about this. He says the most updated documentation about code is the code itself. So, I'm okay. <laughs> not everyone agrees. Uh, I, don't, I don't say that you not, do not need to document code. But code is, uh, is worth reading. And since code is a moving target, I have to select a very specific Django version. Um, what I'm going to say is valid for Django 1.6, 1.7, 2, but I have to select a version just to give meaningful line numbers. So, in my example, I routed the article's URL to the article list view as view function. The get request is incoming. It is processed by SVU function. This is a very important function, a uh, uh, rather long one, is strict to some code. And it basically returns a function. So, as you can see, uh, class based views are just a trick to allow you to write your function based views in a more comfortable manner. Because the class based view returns a function, functional view, this one. And I'm going inside this code later. What, what this function does is to call self dispatch. And I think self dispatch is the most important function inside the um, class based view framework. Because it, through the use of get actor, it's a Python function, what this patch does is to um, convert the HTTP method get, post, put, and so on into a Python function and it goes and it calls it in your view. So your view needs to have a, in this, in this, uh, this time a get function which is provided by this View. List view. This view provides a get implementation which makes many things. It's a rather complex function. Three things are worth uh, being uh, highlighted. Um, first of all, it fills a self object list calling self get query set, which is another method. Then it fills it. Um, Builds the context, calling self get context data, and then it renders the template. As you can see, the class based view framework is fine grained. Classes are just calling methods, and methods are calling other methods. So it is so fine grained that you may replace just the small piece of code you need to enhance or to change. Um, for the purpose of this talk, I just go inside get query set because the time is not so much. Uh, get query set, it, it is generic list line 22 in Django 1.5.7. And get query set does one thing, one important thing. It calls self.model.underscore default manager all. And this is why list view. <coughs> 
and your view that is inherited from this view uh, shows you every object from this model. But this is important to see because here you have some code written by Django developers which is driven by your customization here, model equal article. So here you are just selecting every article in your database. Now, how do you customize a class-based view? Since class-based view are so fine-grained, you just need to replace the small part of code you need to enhance. So I say, in this, this case, I just want to enhance get query set because the list view is returning all articles in my database. I just want to select a subset of them based on some rules. So, uh, so what I do is ju I just override, as you do in object oriented. I just override the method calling the original one and getting your query sets and then doing stuff like filtering and so on. <coughs> this is the real power of class-based views. This is the, the reason why class-based views are a good thing for me. Because just by writing three lines of code, I get a, a whole function framework. Arguments in class-based views. How do you get the arguments from your URL? Well, SV, the SView function does uh, this thing. It uh, initializes the class with the request, the arguments and the keyword arguments. You know that you can pass the Django passes URLs to regular expressions. So you get arguments and keyword arguments just like in functional views, but they are available everywhere in your class. So in your class, every method you override, you can assess those three um, variables. For example, I need to filter my query set by here. I just paste another very good URL, but however. Uh, I put here in the URL and I find it in my self dot keyword arguments. Sorry, there's an error here. Spot this morning. And this is what happened when you write code directly in a presentation and not in your editor. Um, but our self dot keyword arguments contains here. It comes directly from from here. So you can use it everywhere you can assess the, the, the class. Last, CRUD operation and forms. We do CRUD operations through HTTP verbs, you know this. Uh, so how class-based views manage HTTP verbs? Through dispatch. Dispatch, as I said, just selects the function with the same name of the HTTP <coughs> So to um, deal with a POST request, you just need to implement the POST function method. And this is a very simple example. I just inherit from create view, which is a view that allows you to create a new object inside the database, inheriting from this model to ignore some, something. And where does POST come from? It comes from process from view somewhere around in the class hierarchy, which does a lot of things in small code. Uh, it calls it calls self get form class. It calls self get form. Then it checks if the form is valid. It calls form valid and form invalid. As you can see, form and CRUD operation are fine grained too. If you get a, a very small function that simply returns the class of the form, this is the implementation from the Django source code. As you can see, get form class just returns a form class. It's very simple. 
very simple to override, very simple to change, very simple to drive, just by defining form class in your um, class based view. What about forms last thing? What happens when you browse into a form, into a page containing a form? First of all, you browse to the page so you issue a get request. And this is answered. You get a response from the server. Then you post the form and you issue a post request and you get another response. This is the reason there's a double interaction with the with the view. This is the reason why the usual uh, <coughs> post view functional view has this if else condition. You have to deal with double interaction. Sorry again. Uh, how do you deal with double interaction with class based views? Another time, sorry. To dispatch. <coughs> dispatch just selects get from the first request and post for the second. A uh, very good example of this um, use of dispatch is uh, redirect view, which is a simple view that redirects every access to a given URL. Uh, it's this is from the Django source code here. Uh, it implements get to, to the actual redirect, and then implements the head post options delete input, just calling get. This is how we do a redirect view in, uh, with class-based views. So, this is all. Uh, I just scratched the surface of the thing. Uh, go and read the source code. Go and try to understand now why uh, well, why Stack Overflow answers and just tell you what well, override that function and you're done. Uh, there's uh, some well, there are sources in the internet you can check to un better understand the topic. This is one a uh, browser, a, a very good browser of the source code. If you don't want to read the actual source code, you can use this too. Um, there's a project, it's an interesting, and I don't hear to say it's uh, the good project, but uh, Django Vanilla Views is a try to flatten the hierarchy. It's a good try. If you are interested in class hierarchy, go and check it. Then there are, sorry, self promoting, uh, three posts of mine uh, about Django class based views where I go inside the topic a little uh, better than now. Um, since to understand Django class based views, you have to understand Python object oriented. Uh, just try to Google some links to better understand Python OP. This is a post of mine on Reddit, but I, mean, I just find it every, every time by Googling it. Uh, I listed uh, um, some resources that introduce you or better explain you uh, Python object oriented which is a little tricky if you come from another language Python object-oriented implementation is not straightforward uh, This is me um, Feel free to contact me on the internet or here on the conference if you, if you have questions or corrections This is all Thank you